So welcome back everybody. We have had our holiday break and this is the GBC uh, Conscious Book Club and today we're going to start a new reading. And this is the book that we're going to do, Keys to Unlocking Your Inner Power by my good friend Kelly Larson and uh, Empower Your Life and Spiritual Practice. And so joining me today are our friends and supporters of the Conscious Book Reading Club. Um, let's start over here with our new face. You never met this man. This is Freddie Wright. Say hi, Freddie. Hello, everybody. And this is his lovely wife, Florence. And um, and then obviously everybody know this is Shelly Rowe or Shelly. And so uh, <laughs> say hi, Shelly. I did. Oh, okay, good. So anyway, and you know who I am. So anyway, let's let's uh, get started here. We're going to talk about this book. We want to encourage you to buy this book. This is a great book. This is a great book. Those of you who want to step up your game in your spiritual practice, I encourage you to step into the world of keys to unlocking your inner power. It will, for me, this is my own personal testimony, it will lay out what I consider a road map for what you need to do to tap into your divinity, which is that's what we're going to talk, talk about tonight more specifically. But it lays out, it lays out a road map. It defines terms, uh, introduces some new terms, expand old terms. And so I just want you to, I want to encourage everybody to join in with us and read this book together. You can read it with us even though you can't be here, uh, but you can catch our um, recording as you are doing now on YouTube. Shelly will uh, be actually, she will actually put it out there the Monday after our discussions on Sunday. But you can also be involved with us right now by reading the chapters, give us some insight, raise some questions, um, make some comments, and send it to me at mindofgracepb at gmail.com. mindofgracepb at gmail.com. So, with that introduction, let's get started. And let's talk about the first chapter, the first chapter. And the first chapter is aptly named the divine you. And so let's discuss this right quick. Um, this, this introduction introduces us to Kelly's personal experience that took place with a man by the name of Mr. Williams who was a, a heart patient um, and she had a chance to have a, a really profound experience with him as he went into um, the afterlife. And, I, you know, before we talk about her experience with him, let me ask you, uh, those of you, because all of you are spiritual uh, explorers and you are seeking uh, to go beyond just religion and you really want to have a, a, a personal um, relationship with the divine in you and everything. Have, if you have, you have not, but have any of you ever had something similar to that uh, experience in life that kind of made you question reality? I can't say I've ever had an experience like uh, what she had in this first chapter. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else ever had an experience like this? Um... I not no not like um, well not necessarily not, like let me go correct that have you ever had an unusual experience whereby it made you feel or think that there is something going on that is uh, paranormal that is you know is, okay. is different yeah. is yeah. different than no, the, what you normally experience in life that's a better way of mm -hmm. right so, so. Yeah. anybody share your experience you, you, you want to mm -hmm. Florence um. I think I've shared um, this before, but uh, when I first started uh, experiencing things like this was when I was a child, mm. and um, I, I, I did, I told this before, but anyway, I was sleeping on a couch, on a love chair, and my mom was in the living room, and uh, my brothers and sisters, they, my mom was into the soap opera real tough, mm -hmm. so she was watching it, and I was taking my nap. And some, I could see something after me, but the strange thing was, it, I couldn't see the entire body. It was just the eyes, and it was red eyes, and it was like it was it was trying to get me. 
And so I'm running and I can see exactly how my mom was sitting, what she was looking at. Uh, I can see my brothers and my sisters playing and talking. And they told me they could see me twitching and I could, uh, they heard me mumbling, moving my mouth. And I'm saying, help me, help me or something like that. And um, so when I got up, I was angry. And I was like, y'all didn't help me. And I was telling my mom what she was doing and my brothers and sisters. And they just looked at me like, what? How, how did you know you were asleep? And that was my very first time experiencing something like, okay, well, maybe. And, and of course, I, did, I wasn't receiving this type of teaching, so I felt like something was wrong with me. What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, uh, that's very common when mm -hmm. people have a um, extraordinary experience mm -hmm. and everything. What about you, Freddie? I, um, would ex I, I experienced what most people would call a, an out-of-body experience once mm -hmm. when I was younger. Uh, like my wife, I was sleeping on the couch, and I uh, I got up and I went to the kitchen, and I used to love orange juice. I drink it right out of the jug, you know. But uh, sorry, grandma. But anyway, uh, uh, I put the juice up. I'm walking back toward the couch, and I see myself lying on the couch. And how, I, how, excuse me, how old were you? I had to have been all of 10, 11 years old. No, no older than 12 years old. So okay. I was in that age, that age range, but. And uh, I, I was calm, unusually calm about it. And uh, instead of like, you know, freaking out or anything, uh, I walked outside. I went outside and I went up and down the street. It was desolate. There was nothing going on, nothing happening, no cars moving or anything. It was dark. Street lights were on. Uh, no wind, no birds chirping. Everything was just still. And uh, I, I came back into the house. Uh, Wondering how I was going to wake myself up. So what I thought of, uh, I sat down. I didn't look at myself anymore. I just sat down and laid back down. And uh, next morning, I mean, I woke up having had that story, having that story to tell. Mm -hmm. and at the time, how did people respond? Did you share it with anybody? I shared it with my brother, of course, and he just said I was crazy. Um, I shared it with my mother, likewise. She just said I was, you know, probably dreaming. Uh, my grandmother. She just kind of hmm about it. She didn't. She didn't have an opinion I, I, otherwise. You know, but uh, but um, uh, I just chalked it up to being a dream. And um, uh, like my wife through teachings here at the church, you know, I look at that experience now. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, well, there could have been something more to that. But I believe the question was, have we ever had an experience that made us feel like there was something paranormal going on in the world? That was my first indication that you know maybe you know we're not alone there there mm -hmm. there are other things that, that power here okay. more things going on so. what about you Cheryl? um i guess you know similarly like they said you know i'm a i've said before on other shows that is you know dreams are just like my everything and most of my experiences have always been in when i felt like i was i was sleeping you know um I've, I've had instances where I would be asleep and wake up like Freddie said um, one time I got up and was walking through the house and my great-grandfather was there at the house who had passed and you know mm -hmm. I was just talking to him and mm -hmm. when I woke up I was standing where I was talking to him I wasn't in the bed and I don't remember getting up anything like that I've had instances um, as a child, and then they've started again here recently, of having dreams about people who I I don't know in this in this life. I've never met um, a cousin that I had a dream about before who died before I was. Well, she died when I was like one or so, but my mom said you know she used to have me all the time and everything like that, but. You know, I had never seen a picture of her or anything, and we were looking at an album one time, and I was like, I had a dream about her, you know, and had never seen her before. Um, and then as as our teachings have gone on since we've been here um, at this church, they've, you know, become, those kind of instances have gone on more and more about people at this church and things like that involving them um, that I felt were prophetic. Um, I've had opportunity to meet um, some of our teachers um, in in dreams and and get some deep insights oh, yeah. into some things. It's you more know. common now, right? In your life now, 
um, being here where whereby it's not anything that is uh, uh, crazy about it. Well, and I think I, I think it was probably it's it's starting up more again now. But it was more prevalent when I was a child. It was like constant oh, because. Yeah. Because, did you share with anybody? Well, that's, no, because I mean, well, yeah, I did, but I was one of those kids all the time that was telling the story. Yeah. You know, well, that I'm had imaginary friends. How did people friends. in your family so, respond to you? They just said, okay, they listened to me because I, I so was one of those kids that had kid. the, yeah, I had imaginary <laughs> friends. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. You know, we that had tea parties and yeah. all that kind of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and so the fact that they, you know, that I felt like this stuff was real. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I had deep imaginary friends. Like, no, this is my friend. My brother talk about it and all this kind of stuff, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it made, I cried, that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. So, no, they didn't think it was a problem. So, I guess that's why it continued, mm -hmm. right? you know, right. because there was nobody telling me, no, you're not, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Um, I guess when I listen to all this, it, might, it does remind me of the event that happened that Kelly shares in her book that made her begin to realize that there is something going on uh, in reality that could be considered unusual mm -hmm. and that was this and I, I thought that was very interesting it, 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 you, you, y'all can just jump in and share the story with me but she's a nurse uh, this guy by the name of Mr. Williams uh, went into cardiac arrest mm -hmm. um, and she held his hand and apparently he left his body and she didn't she tapped into his conscious mm -hmm. and she went with him into um, a in-between life experience right. or an afterlife experience where he had a life review and she was there witnessing it. Mm -hmm. right. Right. it to me it, it spoke about it spoke to to how people would, would often say that their life flashed before their eyes. Oh, I thought about that. that. You know, that's yeah. the first thing that hit my mind and, and you know for her to say it was on the ceilings and on the walls and on the floors and 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 his and every everything about his life was coming in and out in seconds and they were moving at the speed of light and mm -hmm. you know people say that they say they saw this light and they say their their lives flashed before their eyes before they right. actually came back into And actually uh Freddie that is a very that's a documented common um experience you know, when I was in, you know, a long time ago, when I was in school, um, I took a course on death and dying. And a part of uh, our training was to go to a geriatric place and then to work with people who were terminally ill. Mm. And in preparation for that, um, we studied the, 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 the book Death and Dying by Elizabeth Kubler Ross. And they study um, um, the common experience that happened to people when they die and have a near-death experience, what is called uh, uh, NDE, a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that is very common is that they see a light, the light is loving, mm -hmm. and they have a, uh, well, they, they may meet loved ones in the, in the experience, and then they also have this life review. And the life review is not about judgment. Right. It's not about saying this is, you know, bad, this is good. It's just like a learning experience. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very interesting um, and based upon how people normally think that when they die, they got to stand before God and it's it's like, you know, sheep over here, goats over here, you know, you're going to be good, you'll be bad, and that kind of stuff. This guy went through a whole life review and covered all his experiences. And I think at the end, the angel or the God asked him, yeah. do you want to go back? Mm -hmm. And are you, I guess, are you, I don't know how to get he said, it. He, he asked him if, if you were ready to go. If you were ready to go. Mm -hmm. And, he, and, he told and him the only thing he had, there was, there was no love, there was no judgment in his peace, but the only thing he had was a sense of regret about his, his relationship son. with his elder son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Did y'all pick up anything in that? Because that, that to me, that to me is so contrary to what we are normally taught in 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 religion, no matter what it is, is that you know you gonna have your head down, you're gonna be looking like you know the worst thing in the world. But here's this man with all this experience of his whole life flashing in front of him, and the judgment was like 
uh, an education, you know, to learn yeah. Yeah. to say if um, well, what did you what did you learn out of all of this? Right. You know, and then it gave him the choice to say to stay or go back. Or go back. Mm -hmm. Now you ever kind of wonder what in the world? Because uh, I take it that this was Kelly's first, not maybe first time, but this was a big experience mm -hmm. with the afterworld, with the afterlife. What in the world could have been going through her mind? Well, I think she said, you know, in there, that, you know, she when she came out of it, that she was like, you know, what was going on, and he was like, what was going on. But um, later on in the chapter, she talked about the fact that Mr. Williams, you know, came in her life to take her on this experience. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Mr. Williams was actually... Well, I guess in some aspect of his soul, he may not have been conscious of it, you know, in his physical self. But he was a teacher for her. This was a teaching experience for her that he allowed her to experience with him. And that answers the question of our friend, Miss Crystal White. Hey, Crystal, and you guys can send your questions in to um, our, us by email. But she talked about in the beginning of the experience with Kelly and Mr. Williams. I wondered if she was allowed to view that experience because of her compassion of wanting to be there with him. Kelly just happened to be working that particular day and moment that allowed them both to experience the spiritual world as some also call it the supernatural. But there, um, so to answer that question, Crystal, she does speak to the fact that this was a teaching experience that he allowed her. I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, probably with, with Kelly that she had gotten to a point to a level where she was, you know, like we were talking about as we're having these experiences mm -hmm. now where she was starting to experience more things and this was an opportunity where Let the gods you, allowed her to participate. Let me ask you this. Do you think everybody has these types of, you know, wake up calls that there's something more to life than the, the normal? Do you think everybody, every soul that ends into this world has that type of wake-up call. I know that you all have had them. I've, obviously, I've had them. But you think that's? Do you, do you think? Do you think that everybody has their own unique wake-up call or nudge that there's something more? What do y'all think? What do you think, Fred? It. I think it. De I think it depends. I think it. Uh, but do you think that you're unique? No, I don't. I don't think I'm unique. I think. Uh, It depends on the individual. I, I believe it depends on their level of, of, of spirituality. I believe that you know if 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 you're if you're open to anything, you know you're you you open yourself up to certain experiences. So if you're if you're spiritually open, and and you you're not uh, um, closed minded, right? You're not closed minded. Mm -hmm. You don't limit yourself to the possibilities of of the spiritual world. And I think you like I said you open yourself up for encounters or, or experiences. So do I think I'm unique? No. I just think that uh, you know, coming up, I was you know, I was in church a lot and uh um, I was one of those uh, one of those little boys that was asking the, the reverend questions. You know, I, I questioned him, I questioned my Sunday school teacher. So I believe uh, if anything my curiosity is what uh, what allowed me that that experience. Yeah. What do y'all think about the concept that there are no accidents? That everything that has happened in your life has a synchronicity to it, has a purpose to it. That's a heavy thought. There are no Well, I can say accidents. I believe that now. Right. But when you're going through, no. Yeah, you know, I don't. But now I can truly say some things that I have gone through were to teach me something deeper than you know what I can see on the surface. Mm. Okay. What do you think about that concept? There are no accidents, Philly. Um, you know, like Florence said, with you know, at the time, and Kelly also says in the book, you know, that that you know, at a certain point, you can look back in retrospect and say. Okay, I went through that for a reason. And then when you get to a certain point, like now, I feel like I'm at the point I had the experience just the other day of knowing when I'm in it. You know, when I'm in something now, I can look at it and say, 
okay, focus. What is this? Mm -hmm. What What are you supposed to be learning here? What are you supposed to be getting out of this situation? Just slow down and look at this for what it is, you know. And I think it's a powerful thing that, like, mm -hmm. even um, one time we talked about a lesson um, of when you see signs and symbols and different things happening in the day that you're supposed to stop and evaluate those things and see what they're trying to show you. And I think it's a powerful thing, like, when you have to be somewhere at 7 o'clock and one of the kids spills Kool-Aid all over your white dress. Mm -hmm. And instead of freaking out, you say, okay, yeah, why did this happen? Mm -hmm. And it could be something as simple as you change out of that white dress because when you get there, the person who's doing the presentation had on the same dress. Mm -hmm. Or it could be something or, as... Or if you would have left when you did, you could have been involved in that. That's accident. right. You know, mm -hmm. you drove, you drove you past needed, an accident that yeah, could have been you. That could have been you. Or yeah. you so needed to stay there because something was going to happen. So you have to stop, you know, reacting to things. Stop so reacting to things. You don't, you don't right. yeah. say in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So... The problem comes is that when we don't have this idea that there is order in the chaos, um, that we tend to go into judgment. Uh, you did this to me. Why did this happen to me? Um, right. Who's yeah, against me? Things, that right. kind of thing. Why but me? when you realize that mm -hmm. there is a divine order, there is an order to the chaos, then it causes you to pause and stop and say, okay, slow down, like you said. Let me pay attention, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think that is one of the. I, I, I like that that concept that she put in the book about that no accidents because I think that that's critical to first of all allowing us to stop before we go into our our ego and our human judgment and begin to assign blame because mm -hmm. I think that's one of the big issues yeah, um, yeah. in dealing with life is that we like to point the finger and say. Mm -hmm. Well, if it hadn't been for you, yes. mm -hmm. you know, or like, for example, she talks about, you know, think about the fact that where you were born, who you were born to. Mm -hmm. Right. Your siblings. And That's right. Mm -hmm. The environment well, that you were yeah, born we, in. Y'all talk about that for a minute. Yeah. yeah, don't say something about it. Go ahead. What? Well, my sister, she, I know she's not watching, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> We getting wow. teachings, you know, actually, uh, since you've met my sister, mm -hmm. um, our chief master has met my sister, and you talk with her a little bit, you talk with me, and, and you both have said, did, did y'all grow up together? Mm -hmm. I mean, she is totally, we're, to, we're yin and yang for real. She's completely different from me. And reading this, it's like, okay, well, I need something there's something about her that I need. That's a good idea. And then, you know, with my four brothers, there's something mm -hmm. about them. Because we, there are six of us, and we're all completely, well, I won't say completely different. Because two of us, we don't even talk very much. But let my mom tell it, it's like we talk all the time. Because we have a lot of the same conversations. But it's like, it, it, there's something from each of them that we need. But then, mm -hmm. when, um... My, I think my mom was kind of getting jealous when I first learned about my spiritual parents because I'm like, oh, my spiritual parents this and this and this and this. And so last night she said, well, um, you know my, um, what is it? Zodiac sign is uh, Leo. And Flo love Leo. She <laughs> love lion. She love this. So I guess it's a good thing that I'm your mom, huh? Because my, you know, I was like, yeah, yeah. Well, she's, a Leo. she's a Leo. Yeah, she's a Leo. Oh, okay. We'll she's be talking about our spiritual parents and how they have... Uh, Lions and lionesses around them, and mm -hmm. the things that they like, and and then she she was like, "Well, I'm a Leo, so you know. yeah." And because we're totally different, my mom is super duper shy. How would how would y'all respond? Because this this has come out of the concept that no accidents. Mm -hmm. Even the fact of the country you're born in, the home you're born in, right. the circumstances that each one of them born in. Right. How would you react to the concept that is in here too? Is that to a larger extent? You chose your parents. Well, I was having a conversation with um, with one of our friends about that particular thing the other day. And, you know, I think it's, it's probably kind of hard for us to grasp probably a little bit because 
when we think about some of the situations growing up and all that kind of stuff, you know, you're like, I didn't ask for that. I, I didn't, know. You know, yeah. you know yeah. really? Really? Why I mean, would that, I? That why is would a I? Profound concept, you know, why yeah. would I? You know, yeah. Once you once you get to the point, but why are you? Like I said, why are you in it? In it yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but now when uh, I was talking to my friend and we were talking about our children, then you know he was saying, yeah, yeah, these kids really chose you all. You're in an environment yeah. where you learn in the miracle prayer at thirty. You know, you you know, you have all these things. So yeah, these kids coming up mm -hmm. chose to be in this situation for all the things that they are being exposed to. That you know, they have struggles and things like that. But mm -hmm. you know, in that same aspect, my dad brought me to this church when I was fourteen. <laughs> you know, if he had never if the situation that he had gone through that year before had never brought him here, yeah. then I wouldn't be here right now. So, yeah, somewhere I was like, oh, okay, that would be a good time for me to, you know, start growing up yeah. right about then. So I let have, me go and get in this house. I had a question, though. This is not addressed in this chapter in the book. Um, because some people react negatively to the idea that there are no accidents and that they are choosing to create their own reality. Of course they are going to. <laughs> right, but yeah. here's the point. What if your life is a life of abuse as a child? Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. I so mean, you know, that's why would to... you choose or the Kelly does mention in terms of why people have pain, right. why would you choose a life of suffering? Right. And what part of you is choosing this? Yeah. See I think when people hear that they thinking about, you know, the personality that they are incarnating right now. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is that another point that she makes out, that she makes very clear in this book, is that you, we are multidimensional beings. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand to mean that um, we have an aspect of ourself that is physical, mm -hmm. an aspect of ourself that is in the astral plane, or in the fourth dimension, aspect of ourselves, in all the dimensions that we are, but we're not, we have not un, uh, unified that in a concept to know how to operate with that in a conscious way. But there's an aspect of you at the highest level because at the highest level because we we extend ourselves from source, you know, and there's a there's an aspect of you that truly did create and choose the life, the incarnation that you are experiencing now. And therefore, what's so cool about it, you chose to forget in order that you might really have the experience. Right. That's profound to me. How do y'all feel about that? I don't know how to, uh, like you said, that's heavy. And, you know, it's just heavy. to speak on that is heavy, but, you know. <coughs> it really is you know, heavy. It's like once you become, I have to take it from, from the standpoint of becoming conscious of it. Like, we know that now. And once you know that, you know. Practicing it is another thing. Practicing, right. right. To yeah. practice it is, right. You yeah. took the words good. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. To, I don't know. I was looking for if I was looking for something else in here, but one thing, you know, that Kelly says as we incarnate, live our lives and evolve, a primary goal is to become conscious of this force right. in our lives and to overcome its lower vibrations. I think, you know, when I think about the um difficult situations that we go through in our lives. I've had conversations and asked questions of um, Dr. Gibson and, and Ms. Kathy before about different situations that I've had mm -hmm. in my life that, you know, may have been difficult and things like that. And one of the the things that, you know, I think is beautiful and don't mind sharing with people that he told me that I needed to do for my soul to evolve was to learn how to be happy. And mm -hmm. when he yeah, told me that. when he told me that I was like, oh, that's all I was like, I can do that. Then I said, yes. wait a minute, right, right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> because he didn't just mean just be happy when I'm going shopping yeah. or when I'm yeah. hanging out with my friends yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He meant, and then the stuff started happening. Like, right. like I think one time somebody, uh, we were in Bible study, said that they wanted to, it was Freddie, said he wanted to, no, we were, um, where we at? Watch me. Yeah, and he said he patience. wanted mm -hmm. he wanted patience, and you yeah. told him that he was gonna be tested with that. You put him and, in a situation to, right in order to practice my patience. Right, yeah. and so yeah. Dr. Gibson, when he told me that I was gonna need to learn how to be happy, then stuff started happening that would make me sad or upset yeah. and things like that, you know. And I was like, wait a minute. That was when I started to realize in the moment and be mm -hmm. in the moment and say okay, well, this is going on for a reason. What do I need to learn from that? And since I've started to do that and to find the joy in those things, mm -hmm. they quickly pass, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It just comes and goes. Yeah, yeah. How do you, the, the, um, the, this Jesuit priest named Tillard D. Chardon, um, he made the comment, you've heard me say it before, um, you are not a human being having a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. When you hear that, and when you have heard that, have you ever had time to think about it, what does that mean to you? It's in the book as well. Mm -hmm. For me, just hearing that, you should, I get that, I should let life uh, uh, entertain me, so to speak. You know, uh, whatever's going on in my life at that moment, you know, in the future, whatever's happening, it should entertain me in the aspect of, hmm, why did that happen? Or, hmm, what am, I, what am I to get from this? You know, uh, it should interest me, it should intrigue me, instead of anger me, upset me, uh, uh, those lower vibrations of love that, uh, that Ms. Kelly Larson said. Why would, why would a spiritual being want to have, and which is what, what we all are, yeah. Why would a spiritual being, what would be the purpose of a spiritual being wanting and having and constructing a human experience? Because the human experience is an experience of duality. Mm -hmm. You know, happiness and sadness, love and war, uh, or love and hate, war and peace, birth and death. What value is it to a spiritual being to want to have a human experience? In other words, I'm saying, why are you here? Because I think that's one of the essence of chapter one, is to get us to think about mm -hmm. your soul purpose. Mm -hmm. Why are you here? Have you ever sat up at, at night sometime? I know I have, man. And, and asked the question, you know, do you know who you, do you know where you're going to, do you <laughs> like the things life is showing you, mm -hmm. you know, okay, having a Donald Ross moment, right, right. okay, I'm but the fact you. is, uh, uh, <laughs> mahogany, right. yeah, uh, having a fact is, but he was sitting and thought about, man, why, what is my purpose, mm -hmm. what's the plan, why am I here, what am I here to do, right, you ever had that question, you ever thought about that deeply, I mean, because life happens, we get caught up in a routine, going to work, coming back from work. We get caught up in a routine, you know, changing diapers, as y'all do. I don't know. But change, changing diapers, raising kids, you know, driving back and forth, grocery shopping, watching TV, watching sports. And you say, man, what is this all about? I mean, when you stop and deal with a lot of, look at a lot of people in the world, they, I mean, it's cool. They talk about football, basketball. They talk about cooking. Talk about buying and selling, going and coming. But when you stop and think about it, what is it all for? It's like it's like yeah, what is it all for? It's like okay, it's like a game of Monopoly. You play the game, you get boardwalk, park place. You get you move all around the board. You know, somebody goes broke, somebody makes bank. But when it's all said and done, every piece goes back into the box. It all goes back in the box. No matter how much money you make in the game, no matter, no matter how much uh, money you lose in the game, no matter what you buy and own, and you, know, you make bank, you go broke. 
when the game is over, every piece, all the money goes back into the box. But that's only your physical self. But that's with my your point. Soul, that's the point. Right? That's the point. But with your soul, everything doesn't go back into the box. Hopefully, you went through, you learned enough in that life that it evolved you but to do the, we for stop? the next time. That's right. And that's what's that's about evolution. It's about evolution. Do we stop and think about the choices, you know, the thoughts, the direction that we take? Are we conscious? Of the fact of what is the meaning of life as it relates to your soul. Because you are a spiritual being having a human experience. Mm. And I'll be honest with you, when I look at and I you know, I've been at this church for, you know, twenty some over twenty some years and and I'll be honest with you, I look at people and in church I'm talking about. And their spiritual lives are as uncertain and their spiritual practice is, is as incomplete as anybody that's, you know, that's outside of church. It's just, I mean, religion can be itself no different than going shopping. Mm -hmm. A routine. Right. A thoughtless activity. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I find so important about people reading this book. To begin to look at into your divinity, your divine plan. Why are you here? Why did you incarnate right. here? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a very profound thing where where we definitely want to encourage people to read this. Um, anybody want to add anything to that? Like that point? The 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 whole thing you were saying, the statement that you finished making, the point you just made, uh, just took me back to your favorite movie. The Matrix, yeah. you know, it's, it's it's the Matrix, and it's designed to keep us from the bigger picture. You know, I feel like you know, yeah. people are in this world, in their in their routine, going about their daily uh, uh, struggles and uh, successes, if you will. But uh, repeating what you said at, at the end of the day, at the end of the life, at the end of this physical journey, not the spiritual, it all goes back to the box. So. You know, it, in the uh, Miss Miss Larson stated in there that that she realized that the purpose is, is our purpose here is is more than just to work and and, and to rip and run and shop is is uh, evolution, mm -hmm. becoming closer to your divine self, mm -hmm. uh, enlightenment. All right, uh, and this brings us to the concept of reincarnation. Mm -hmm. Reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And the purpose is that the reason why you keep coming back here is you're evolving. And each life is designed to help you to, like you said, reach your divine purpose, your goal, to the point whereby you no longer need to come back here. And then you go to another stage of development or whatever the case may be. I oftentimes wonder, you know, why is it that that concept, which I know we can get into later on in, in, the, in the book, but why is that concept so hard for church people, religious people to swallow? Because if you are a spirit being having a, divine, having a human experience, if you are a manifestation of source, and you're filled with source energy, do you really think in 70 years you can actually, well I guess you could, but for the most part, people don't reach their full potential yeah. with that little period of time. One thing that I want to outline is that is is the fact is that she called source a feminine. She should. Be. Mm -hmm. um, um, I want to say entity, but maybe uh, energy or whatever. Right. And she has actually had put a name a name for it called Barbellet. Mm -hmm. I think that's that. I thought that was huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was that's very cool. I, I like that. Um, because the source is love. Mm -hmm. The source doesn't need worship. The source is not here about getting you to serve it. That's profound. The source just is. It is the source. Everything happens within the source. It is the mother of all that is. That's something to think about. I'm going to tell you, um, I know we're all just getting started, but 
having um, you know read a little before on the book, you in you all we all everybody who's participating with us, you in for a serious ride in your spiritual development, your spiritual knowledge. Um, and so I just want you to buckle your seatbelt as you join us in Keys to Unlocking Your Inner Power by Kelly Larson. Buckle your seatbelt. It's going to get a little bumpy, but we're going to be here to ride along with you Absolutely. in this journey. And so um, anybody have any final statements they want to make before we uh, shut down the uh, conversation? Okay. Let's um, turn it up. Yeah. What you say? What you say? Turn it up. Turn it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to um, come back uh, next week, and we're going to do chapters two and three. Chapters two and three about teachers, students, and lessons. Uh, chapter three is about the path to spiritual cultivation. So until next time, get the book. Amazon has a good price for it. Uh, send information to us on our Facebook uh, page about the um, uh, the reading of the book. Get a discussion going. Give us some give us some stuff to talk about. If we didn't cover things that you say, oh, I wish I'd talk about this. Well, look, you read the chapters two and three, and send us your questions. No, without question, we will discuss what you send to us. Let's have a great conversation. Let's spiritually grow and evolve. And until next week, have a great week.